right then. Nice long track. We've sort of levelled out a bit now. It was quite a bit uphill back there. There's um, a wood there, not a very big wood, but it's got bluebells in it. Small blankets of or pockets of bluebells. Difficult for me to take a picture exactly. Um, see, there's a little pocket there. I'll just zoom in on them. There's nothing like Longwood though. Nothing like Longwood. There is a few about though. I think they float in the air as well because we've got wild bluebells in the front garden where I live and so is somebody further up. Well we never planted in them and they weren't always there so somehow they've turned up there. They are quite common in, down this way. They're protected species of course. Right, well it's been quite a long walk. I've got alternatives if I didn't want to walk. I know I don't fancy walking up the beach when I get back to Weston. That's a long hike in itself. Once I reach Bleeden I have got alternatives. There's bus stops along the road there. Um, whereas I wanted to, I could just get on a bus and get back into Weston that way. Or I could continue the lovely journey because it is all nice to uphill and hopefully there's still a number five bus that would take me back into town. That's, that's of course several hours go yet many quite a few hours yet it's beautiful though isn't it this walk now uh, several years ago I think it was round about here as well the first time I came along here there was a bloke along here with overalls on with a chainsaw he's on his own he did give me the creeps a bit I must admit I wasn't expecting to see a man with a chainsaw out here, but he was a warden, um, a keeper of this path and everything. But I always remember that, thinking, oh my god, I hope he's okay. <laughs> yeah, I've got a feeling it was either those poles there or a bit further up. Now, of course, creeping through, there it is. Crook's Peak is still keeping its eye on me. Still keeping its eye on. Getting further and further away. I can still hear that awful motorway. Do you know what? That is like really bad. You're, going, you're in the countryside, you can hear the birds, you can watch the butterflies, you can see the bluebells, you can enjoy the new green leaves, but all the time there's the hum. The motorway humming. You know. That's the M5 busy road that goes all up north to Birmingham. Then it becomes the M6. Oh, I just love all the green now. The green, fresh green. That pale sort of freshness. They're going to be pumping out oxygen. They're going to be busy little factories. All their little cells busy. <sighs> I 
making the food stores for the roots. And when the whole system will come into operation when the roots get hold through the water system. After photosynthesis will convert the starch into glucose or equivalent for trees to absorb. They need energy as well, don't forget. You can't do anything without some source of energy. Of course, if we were green, if we had chlorophyll in us and we could photosynthesize, that would be a whole new ball game, wouldn't it? We probably wouldn't have to eat food. I wonder if they're going to work on that, you know. I mean, DNA is in plants as well. To have a, like a, a human plant. I wonder if they've thought of that yet. I would have thought that would be the ultimate thing, wouldn't it? To be a human. So they said the Martians were green, didn't they? But have this ability to make your own energy just through the sunlight. Why not? What do you think of it, plant? Would you like to be able to walk? Yes, this always seems quite a long hike. But of course, the thing is, once I get on here, especially when it's this, this way going, not so much the other way, um, I've already done quite a big hike. I've already done, you know, like four hours of walking once I get here. So, I have slowed up a little bit. I put loads of suntan lotion on. Not suntan lotion, sun protector on earlier. This is the field I've seen some cows in. They've obviously gone over the other side of the hill now. And you can see that lots of animals shelter around here. It's all churned up, look. Yeah, I do get some crazy ideas when I'm out walking. They're not really crazy though, are they? Little glimmers across there, across the valley. Of course, some people won't be able to listen to my videos on their iPhones. Because uh, they wouldn't have enough uh, storage space. It's dedicated fans and insomniacs and the Americans that listen to my videos. Conservation area, livestock grazing, strictly no dogs. Don't worry, I'm not going in there, I ain't going near any cows. Right now, from here, I'm just going to zoom in. That's the back of the Mendips over there, which I was on earlier, before I got to Crook's Peak. You can see a wall where the people were working. I don't know if it'll zoom in that far now, but this, I think it might just pick out some people working on the wall still. I'm, I'm finding it hard to keep the camera still. There, there's people working on the wall there. I walked past them down from that hill earlier. And I probably pointed out this hill when I was over there. Look how far away that is. And I was over there earlier. A couple of hours ago. Crook's Peak's just round the corner hiding. And we're getting further and further up this top of the... I'm on top of a hill, more or less. And... Uh, or not... No, the hill that you can see from over there will be the top of there, look. So I'm just following the path just down a bit from it. It's 
still a little gate there, look. It just shows it's changed over the years. There's, there's still like a gate there. They might have had a gate across there then. I think we're coming up to a field with some daisies in it now. Up there, look. I mean, that would be nice to go up and walk across the top there, wouldn't it? But because there could be cows, I'm not going to bother. Right, over and out everyone, take some pictures again. <laughs>